Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the absolute best set right now to buy. And this is also true if you go to FM, what you get, if you have a choice to get price support, I would say always pick this set, which is Afert Revolt. Now, the reason the set is so valuable is not necessarily due to the masterpieces, although the masterpieces are a additional, they are very beautiful and they are much better than the invocations. The inventions, in my opinion, have a lot more long-term value than the invocations in Amarket in Hour of Devastation. So there is that, but I wanna focus on the distribution of value and why it's so important. The distribution of value in A for Revolt is in the rares and one very special uncommon. So the reason that is incredibly important is you can actually get the card. So Metallic Mimic is a $14 rare. It has, in my opinion, long-term value. I think it's gonna be great in tribal and every tribal or plus one, plus one EDH commander deck, this will have, this is it. I mean, this is a great card, a lot of flexibility, amazing at a two drop, it's a two one, it also becomes a it becomes that creature type, which is incredibly important if you want to trigger abilities. So dinosaurs are good. It's also a dragon if you want it to be. It's a vampire. This is a card that early on I identified as very, very good when it was under $5. Now people are seeing it for what it is. It's a dinosaur. It's a two drop, two one dinosaur that makes all your other dinosaurs bigger. All right. now. On to the next rare. So you have two of these cards at non-mythic over $10. That is very uncommon. Now what's not on, what's even more uncommon is I think these two cards actually have eternal playability. Walking Ballista is very, very good. Um, it's not just good in standard. So you look at these two cards and something jumps out, it's artifacts, so both artifacts, meaning they can be played in any deck regardless of the color pattern. That's good for EDHs, that is good. So EDHs, these are incredibly valuable because of how flexible the card is, as well as the plus one, plus one counters. Both those two cards can be played in any deck with plus one, plus one counters, including Atraxa, or whatever comes out in the future. We don't know what's coming out in the future, but I like cards that scale well, and these two cards scale well, no matter what is, they can only get stronger in time. All right, Fatal Puss, an $8 uncommon, a $34 foil for an uncommon. This is why I love A for Revolt. Forget the masterpieces, the masterpieces are a lottery, and yes, they look very good, and they are quite expensive for this particular set, but forget those, focus on the fact that there's an $8 uncommon, that you can make back your money from an uncommon from a pack. You can double the pack value from an uncommon. That's unique. That's something that you're not gonna see every day. And obviously, Fatal Push sees, sees a ton of modern play. It is incredibly strong. And at the very end of the day, it's Fatal Push. It's a tier one card, the modern. There's not much else I need to say except, yeah, this card is legit $8 and it could climb up to 10, depends. So you have the heavy hitters, you have the two card, the three cards that I know will have some modern playability, if not a lot of modern playability. This card is disallow. I think this card's gonna tank after rotation, but it's also nice. Mythics are very, very, so out of a box, maybe you expect three to four mythics, which means one out of every nine packs is, in a, if you're lucky, has a mythic. That's not great odds. The other eight cards will be rares. So it is very good odds that you can get a disallow or a, a fatal push, maybe you get both, a ballista or a metallic mimic because there's just more of them. It's just more common. So I like this allow. I like the fact that there's also other cards in the set that you can make back the money in a pack. 
So if you're asking for price support, that's all you really can ask for. Now, this is another card that I feel like has longevity in terms of playability. Uh, ED8, he is very strong, and I did play him Magic Duels, and he was the most annoying thing to play against in Magic Duels. It's good. It's a two drop that makes everything cheaper already that has value and in ED8. And then whenever you counter something, you get another card. That is insanely valuable because some of the most powerful cards in blue dismiss. I love dismiss when it was legal. I, you know, it's very, very strong. So another card that is worth more than $4 at rare I totally ignored the mythics, and mythics in these sets are very bad, unless you're talking about the mythic of the foil mythic, which are the inventions, which are very, very good. Here is another four dollar card, heroic intervention. It's an interesting card. Definitely is going to see some plays in some play in EDH and some a card that has been ticking up. The value of a set. I uh, know most people are not going to win the lottery, but if you break even, you open a pack, and you get a heroic intervention, I don't think that's the worst case scenario. It's a $3.68 card. I don't know why the foil is only $4. There's something kind of odd about this card price. Maybe because it's recently gone up in price. Expected value is not based on the mythics. You could have a $40 mythic like the Scarab God and Hour of Devastation and still be a very terrible expected value set, which Hour of Devastation is. It is based on the rares, and in this case, there's an $8 on common. And it's also based on whether or not the whether or not these cards will have long-term value. Because when you're in a panic to try to sell and move these cards, no one's going to sell. No one wants to do that because they already know what's going to happen. Everyone knows when rotation is happening and no one's a buyer during rotation. All right, let's talk about this one. This one is a vampire. It is a mini vampire Nighthawk. And vampire Nighthawk, before it was reprinted to like the ground, it's still a good card. It's still a very valuable card for, for a card reprinted that many times. So this one is very good. It is a $2 uncommon. So you have an eight and $2 uncommon. So even worst case scenario, you pull one of these and that's all you get. You almost break even, right? It's half the value of the pack. And for most other, other sets, like if you look at our devastation, there's very few things that you can pull to break even that's non-mythic. And the mythic thing is kind of, um, it's like a red herring because you cannot expect you're going to pull a mythic. But I can expect from my box I will have at least a few of this uncommon of fatal push. Right? I, I can expect at least two to three fatal pushes. Depending on how lucky I am, I might even have a playset. And that's $32 of eternal value. Even if I miss on everything else, I can probably expect a metallic mimic or a ballista. One of the two, maybe not, maybe both. This allow, I cannot stop getting those cards. I can expect to see value in other places. And if, great, if I hit the invention lottery, great. If I don't, at least there I get a few fatal pushes. I get some other cards worth some money. And long-term wise, I think they're going to hold well, especially the first two that we talked about. Um, the first three. Uh, fatal push obviously is very, very good. And then Metallic Mimic, I think, is just incredible for Tribal and plus one and plus one. And then Ballista, it has a lot of good combos, a lot of really interesting infinite combos, and it can only have more combos in the future, not less. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.